My name is Connor, I'm from London in the UK and I do Chinese bowl and acrobatics. I met this guy that was really into Diablo um, and he just kind of grabbed me like he was doing it at lunchtime one day and I was like oh I've done a bit of that before, like I've done a circus workshop when I was like six. And I was like, oh, I've done that a bit and I kind of did like a real basic trick and he was like, okay, cool. Want to come to a juggling club with me? And I was like, uh, sure. Like I'd literally just met this guy, like never met him before in my life. And I was just like, okay, sure. So we went to this juggling club and then I just got super hooked. My mum was just super keen on me going to university. She really wanted me to do a degree. So I looked for what I was interested in. I was like, right, circus degree, so they are thin. Like, does that exist? Because um, I had no idea at all, and I Googled it and found all of these universities all over the world that do circus degrees. Um, so I applied for the one in London, the circus space, got in on a conditional offer as a juggler. Once I got there, I saw a guy in Chinese pole and was like, I want to do that. And just kind of went to the head of acrobatics and was like, what does it take for me to change this plan? Like, what, what needs to happen? Um, and he was like, cool, you've got from now, which was like mid-September until Christmas, until the end of term, to just train in your own time. Like, you can get other people to help you, but like, just train and if you're good enough in that three month period, then we'll consider it and maybe you can switch to being an acrobat rather than being a juggler. Um, and yeah, just train my own stuff. It's been a few places um, in Australia that really just kind of got there and kind of couldn't, couldn't even believe it existed. Like it was just kind of, you know when somewhere just like hits you right like right in the chest and you're just like, oh my God, this place is stunning. And I think often it, it, it really coincides with the time that you go as well as the place that you are. So I was having quite a rough time um, a few years back and was just kind of in a bit of a weird place emotionally and um, took a road trip with a really close friend. And we went down, we were visiting a cousin of mine who was about an eight hour drive south of where we were, but we were kind of stopping along the way. And we stopped on a, a lighthouse in Byron Bay in Eastern Australia. And it's the easternmost point of the continent. So like you're just looking out at the Pacific and the, you know that just like down there somewhere is New Zealand, but really like the next thing you're gonna see is Chile. And it's just like, like there's something about where I was emotionally, the fact that it was the first time that I'd left Brisbane since I'd got to Australia like the first time I'd been out of the city and just how stunning that place was and just how massive that ocean is that was just like really special. The first one I saw and um, it might actually be the first contemporary circus show I've ever, I ever saw um, it uh, was Loft um, and I'm not sure if it was Loft or if it was um, uh, is it Porous Marchie? I can never remember the order of those three words. There's an acrobat show and there was Loft that were both at um, Circus Fest in London in 2008, I think. Um, and I saw them both a few weeks apart and they were the first contemporary circus I'd ever seen and they just completely blew my mind. Often before a show I can feel quite, quite nervous or if there's someone in the audience I know, like I can have all of these thoughts going on and as I step out onto stage like to start performing I just feel really calm like I just get this real sense of like and then I get a real kind of tunnel vision is maybe the wrong word but it's kind of the closest thing I can think of to, to capture it that just thing of like clarity about what needs to happen and what I'm doing and then a real sense of kind of ease and comfort like I actually it really feels like home I spent a lot of time on stage and now I just feel like like you can think in fast forward like in one second you can do five seconds seconds worth of thinking so you can really be like right what are they seeing how do they like you analyze everything that they're seeing kind of as you're doing so you can project more than you would just naturally being
Um, the pre-show poo is very important. Um, I am someone that really, I have an ability to become quite superstitious and to kind of fall into habits. So I do my best to not let myself because it just becomes cripplingly difficult if you can't meet those habits. Like if there's a day where it's like, oh, we need to rework the show and it takes you 10 minutes to go and knock on a piece of wood and shake hands with this person and say something to someone else. Like if you have all of these rituals in place and you don't get to do them, then you spend the first bit of the show panicking. So like I've really deliberately gotten rid of any rituals that I have as, as far as I can. So no, but it's a very deliberate choice. I can pick my nose with my tongue. That used to be a lot easier on my face, my face don't be bad. <laughs> like two of the companies that influenced me and I kind of wanted to work for the most when I started were Surfer and the Seven Fingers. And Having kind of, I spent the last three years working with Circa and just got here and working with the fingers, like that, that realization that you have a dream and you can live that dream, like still kind of have to pinch myself. <laughs> Remember that the show that you're making or the thing that you're doing is not the only thing you'll ever do and that if you're working for someone else, you're working for someone else. Like, don't feel that you have to put everything you can do in every show you make. Don't um, inflict your artistic biases on the process necessarily, because sometimes someone will have another idea which is different to your own, and it might be better, or it might work better in that context. And just generally, like, be a yes man. Like, if someone says, hey, can you try this? Just say yes. Like, if it's really bad, that will come out in the process. But like to just say yes and to get on with it and to like support people through the process, I feel like when I was told that and when I really learned that and took that into my working practice, my whole artistic life has been way easier, more fun. People enjoy working with you, you enjoy working with people. The ideas you come up with are things that you could never have dreamed of because they're beyond just your ideas, they're everyone's. I've had a career where I've been surrounded by people that work really, really hard, um, who are amazing for what they do, and who are just lovely, generous, open people, and people like that inspire me. I'm really scared about the idea of losing the things that make me happy. So, Freya, the idea of losing her is terrifying. The idea of losing my physicality, I find that really scary. Um, yeah, just kind of losing the things or the people that you love or that make your life enjoyable. You could pick out a handful of moments where like, oh, actually, if that didn't happen, I'd have an entirely different career, like, or an entirely different life or an entirely different relationship. Um, just stuff like you say yes to a particular job, you meet a certain person that, I mean, for a real life example, I started working with Circa three years ago and met Freya and we fell in love and now we're married. Like, if I'd not taken that job, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't have that experience. I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't be married. I probably wouldn't know her. Like, you just look at all of the, the chain reactions. Like, the guy that I met that did Diablo. If I never met him, I don't know if I'd ever found Circus. Yeah, like, I was super into Parkour and I was really into theatre and acting and I remember, speaking of life changing moments, um, the dance teacher at a theatre course that I went to, she was like, if 
your heart will let you do anything else. Do not act. Do not go into acting because you'll spend your whole life working in bars and not doing that much performing unless you are exceptionally lucky. That piece of advice kind of made me really interrogate whether performance was really the thing for me. And interestingly, I think that my heart wouldn't let me do anything else, but luckily I found something that wasn't acting and then have, have that unique selling point that allows me to have the career that I have. It really depends where I am. So often you spend your life on tour, um, so if you're on tour, just exploring, visiting. Um, I'm really into kind of hunting out speciality coffee shops when I'm in a new town. When we have a home, we really use the fact that we have a home because it's so rare for us because we travel so much. Cooking, having friends over, playing stupid nerdy board games. We just went on a, a pretty hard binge of Arcadia Quest. But, um, yeah, Freya's not super into that because I super love my hero too much and she doesn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, I don't know, I can kind of get into anything that's pretty nerdy. I think if it's something that's compatible, then for sure you're going to try and evade that situation. Where if it's something that is inevitable, I would really just try and spend time with the people that I care about and that I love. I have that thing, like if I'm playing a board game or something where I'm like, I could win, but actually if they did that, I totally wouldn't be able to win in the way I think I could win. I have to tell them so that I actually won for a deal. Like, yeah. So you're that good? Um, not, not every time, but I'm that competitive. 